Like I'm hearing only from the children's section. Blessed children. So I should start with you again tonight. Children, children, are you there? Praise the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' name. And then the wonderful youths, you are there. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Oh, it's like the children have uh, become the champion for tonight. Should I give you another chance? All right, let me start with the children again. Children, children, you won the first round. This round, are you ready? Praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. Clap for yourself. Just clap for yourselves. Let's hope the youths will do good and better. Better from good to better. Better best, eh? Good, better, best. Are you ready? Huge praise the Lord. Oh, yes, that's better, better. You clap for yourself also. Clap for yourselves. Now, everybody together, youth, children, and our papa, mama, everybody, praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Everybody, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stars. Standing tall and as rising. Tell me the rest. Standing tall. Standing tall. Yes. That's what we do in Jesus' name. Amen. We are proceeding. We thank God for what the Lord ministered to us yesterday. Today is going to be greater. Everybody say, greater. Let me hear you. Greater. Greater. Amen. Expect greater blessings because when the word of God goes forth through the servant of God, Great, great blessings, great, great miracles will come into the life of all the hearers, and you will receive yours in Jesus' name. You receive your blessing, your miracle, signs and wonders for you tonight in Jesus' name. If you believe, let me hear a louder amen. Yes, it shall be so in your life in Jesus' name. Before we have the joint choir of the children and the youth together that we usher in the preaching of the word of God. We want to recognize um, dignitaries in our midst and we have a goodwill message also that will be coming up very shortly. Now, we have in our midst tonight Mrs. Vosse Oremeye Ojo. That's the a director of uh, special duties, FCT here, Universal Basic Education Board, and an associate member of FCS. You are welcome, ma. God bless you. Can you stand for recognition? God bless you. You are welcome, ma. Put your hands together. Amen. We also have Pastor David Adams. He is the chairman of Christian Teachers Fellowship. You are welcome, sir. Where are you? God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. Put your hands together. Can do better. Amen. We also have Brother Godfrey, the training secretary of Fellowship of Christian Students. You are much welcome. Where are you? Welcome, sir. God bless you. Amen. And then we have Brother Stephen Tuan. He is the area secretary. Fellowship of Christian Students. You are welcome. God bless you. Thank you very much. Put your hands together. Amen. And all ministers and all others, digni other dignitaries around, we welcome you all in Jesus' name. A louder amen. Now, 
we have the pleasure of the company of the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs in Abuja here, ably represented by Mrs. Julie Alcaria, the Principal Community Development Officer, representing the Honorable Minister Divine Daniel Pauline Tallinn. She will be coming up. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for Jesus as she comes up now to give us a goodwill message from the Honorable Minister. You are welcome, ma. Our amiable mommy, the wife of the uh, general big daddy, the minister of God here present, permit me to stand on the executive protocol. My name is Julie Akaria, an officer of the Federal Minister of Women Affairs, representing the Honorable Minister, the Paul in Tallinn, Federal Minister of Women Affairs. She sends her greetings. She would have loved to be here, but due to engagement, she is unavoidably absent. She gave me a special message to be delivered on her behalf. Please listen attentively as I read. I am delighted to be in the midst of these distinguished ladies, and I express my appreciation to you all for the impressive turnout at this occasion. Let me first of all commend the Deeper Light Christian Ministry for this proactive effort to chart a noble pathway for Nigeria youth. I would also like to specially appreciate the General Superintendent of the Deeper Life Christian Ministry Worldwide, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumoye, for his humility and spiritual leadership in shepherding the flock of Christ these past years. I am particular, particularly enlightened by this vision as well as his demonstrated passion towards building a youth population with strong moral persuasion and economic drives for inclusive growth and development. The youth are both the leaders and owners of tomorrow. As we age, the expectation is that they step into leadership roles, manage the natural resources in a sustainable manner to the benefit of all. In this regard, the requisite capacity, capability required to be used, uh, successful in life, successful in the official roles as leaders, also be acquired, not through effective formal learning, mentorship programs such as this global youth convocation, among others. It is for this reason that the Federal Minister of Women and Fair created the gender department to focus on issues relating to youth, women, girls, and the vulnerable group, social economic development. The ministry approach has been to identify and eliminate causal factors to youth restiveness and deviant cultural behavior, as well as build their capacity for national development. To this end, youth, women, girls have been trained on various skills and empowered economically. Mentorship programs have been organized for a good number of them to prepare them for greater tasks of becoming positive societal role models. In spite of the negative narrative of our youth, I want to say that the Nigerian youth are doing well. They are making exploits in ICT, engineering, medicine, music, and literary arts. The potentials of the Nigerian youth in a potentially great nation is enormous. The, the Nigerian economy is bakery on 
creative and innovative minds for its whole development. Any and all of you seated here today could be the one. The ministry recognizes the fact that government cannot do it alone. Hence, we appreciate this wonderful, transformative, innovative effort from Deeper Life Christian Ministry, aimed at addressing the challenges affecting the youth. While assuring you of Federal Ministry of Women Affairs support in similar future endeavors, I enjoy you all to take advantage of this opportunity in this event on first to learn and imbibe the right attitude and morals that whenever you find your divine and sign purpose in life. And thank the leadership of the Deeper Life Church for putting together this impactful program aimed at producing and reorientating our youth while repositioning them for a meaningful and impactful life ahead. I wish you all a very fruitful engagement. Thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. You can do better. Put your hands together for, her, for that wonderful message from the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs. And we appreciate the presence of our beloved sister that have come to represent her. And the challenge, I believe by the grace of God, all of us have had the challenge, and we are going to do better than before, and greater things will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we are going to have the joint choir the children and the youth. The choir, joint choir of both the children and the youth. God bless you.
of your story is here. And he's going to tell a good story about you. He's going to write something on your behalf concerning you today. Something glorious. Something wonderful. The good shepherd will write a good story about your life in Jesus' name. Amen. He's a life changer. And as you listen to the word of God tonight, get prepared to receive the blessing of God. The Lord has been using his servant through whom we are going to hear the word of God again tonight in various places and as he preaches power. What did I say? Let me hear you. Power. The mighty power of God will touch you. And there will be life transformation. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. There will be great blessing for everyone. In Jesus' name, I will receive my own. Let me hear you. How about you? Children, I will receive my own. And youths, I will receive my own blessing. Everybody, I receive my own blessing tonight. Amen. Amen. It's time to receive the blessing of God through the word of God as the convener of these global children and youth convocation will be ministering to us again. Our, great, our minister, the servant of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. Let's rise up. Put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, tonight is not about me, it's about you. I come to lift up the VIPs of the hour. I come to take mediocres out of the dungeon of failure. And I want to take you to the mountain top of mastery tonight in Jesus' name. A miracle is coming your way there. Lifetime miracle. Momentous miracle. Great manifestation of miracle. Your night has come. I said your night has come. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. I pray today, anyone in the dungeon of mediocrity, you lift them up, you move them up, and they come to a miracle place in life that will be permanent in Jesus' name. And I pray, the miracle of upliftment that you do tonight will never be reversed in any life in Jesus' name. Move everyone up. Higher. Higher. Higher than they have ever been in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down in the manifestation of your miracle. Tonight, moving up from mediocrity to mastery by a miracle. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth a prize, so run. So run. Run in such a way. Run on the right track. Run with the right speed. And run with the right knowledge. And run with the goal and destination in front of you. Run, don't wobble. Run, don't just say, be like a physical. Run, don't just walk as if you are in leisure. Run, so run that she may obtain. That's what we're come to today. That 
we can take up this challenge and understand that life is a race. Education is a race. Profession is a race. Personality, developing a good personality that will make a mark in the generation in which you live is a race. Everything about our lives, character, charisma, competence, courage, everything we try to have, we have them so that they will help us to run the race of life. Now, you cannot run with your neighbor's legs. You have to stand by yourself. You cannot run with your neighbor's energy. If you're going to run anyway, if you're going to run in the physical, in the moral, in the spiritual, in the profession, if you're going to run, you have to use the legs that God has given you. It's giving us brain, a mind. It's giving us heart. It's giving us a soul. It's giving us personality. It's giving us everything we need to run. But then you have to make up your mind, I will run. That's not enough. I will so run. I have a destination. I'm talking about you. I have the path that leads to the peak of the mountain, and then I, anything I'm going to have is not going to come from outside. Am I going to run? Feet are not going to come from outside, but another person. Am I going to run? The vision and the eyes I have and the focus I have will not come from other people. Am I going to run? The energy and the determination for me to get to that destination, it's not going to come from anybody. Everything is inside here. And so I gather everything together and I so run. I concentrate when I run. I search my goal when I run. I look at the place I'm going. I do not allow discouragement or despair or whatever it is uh, to pin me down, I keep running. So run that ye may obtain. Now, it's what you obtain that shows the evidence you have been running. If you don't obtain anything, you know, and you just say, I've been running, I'm doing my best, I'm going through life, I'm trying to achieve, I have determination, and I'm running. It's what you achieve that speaks for you. It's where you get to that speaks for you. It's the result of what the running you are talking about is that one that will justify you have been running. So run that ye may obtain. You will obtain. That's why you came here. Forget the crowd. Think about yourself and myself one on one. That your life will be taken up by God. And through everything all our ministers are sharing with you and what the Lord leads me to share with you, you will rise up. You might have fallen, you will rise up. You might have been be reaching up, you will rise up. You will start where you are now. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. In a few months, in a few years, you'll be there. So run that ye may obtain. Look at verse 25. Every man that striveth for the mastery, every man that striveth for the mastery. There are people that do not strive for the mastery. They put nose into other people's lives. They put nose into what does not concern them, their own life. 
their own destiny, their own goal, and their own desires. They do not nourish, but when a man wakes up, you are waking up. Everything that is dead or dormant in you will wake up tonight. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Is temperate in all things. That's what temperate means. It's moderate. It's controlled. It's subdued. It's very selective. It says, uh-uh. That will not add to my goal. I brush it off. That will not lift me up to the peak I'm going to. It takes that up. That happens to everybody. The athlete that is running has to understand that will help me. That will not help me. That food will help me. That drink will not help me. He ought to understand that he must be temperate. In all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible. Your life will be incorruptible. And your destiny incorruptible. In life, as you take this word to heart, you will run, and so run, you will be unstoppable. The first thing you need to realize is you. Have the chance and the calling to run, and nobody can stand in your way. I said nobody can stand in your way. You know, if anybody could have stood in the way of anyone, Potiphar's wife could have stood in the way of Joseph, but he was destined for the top. And Potiphar's wife could not stop him. Nobody will stop you. If anybody could have stopped anyone from the high position that the Lord destined Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for, Nebuchadnezzar could have stopped them. The furnace of fire could have stopped them, but the fire could not stop them. I said the fire could not stop them. Here is Elijah. And if anybody could have stopped Elijah, Ahab and Jezebel combined together could have stopped Elijah. But that man was unstoppable. And I want to raise you. What am I talking about? I said I want to raise you as an unstoppable Master, in any profession the Lord has called you to, in Jesus' name. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the members of the Sanhedrin could have stopped Peter and John. They could not stop them. That same God, the God of heaven, the God of power, the God of all possibilities that helped them and nothing could stop them, that same God is still alive. Nobody will stop you. Your circumstances will not stop you. And the people you think, if they give me chance, then I will fly. You don't need anybody to give you a chance. God has given me your chance. And when God says yes, nobody can say no. And in your life, the Lord will take you from where you are now to where you ought to be. Look at verse 26. It says, therefore, I so run. What I love about uh, the apostle Paul is, he wasn't a preacher that will say, do as I say, but don't do as I do. He himself said, I, apostle, I'm still running. I can tell you about myself. I, therefore, so run. I am still running. I said, I am still running. And if I, look up here, if 
why I still have a goal. I still have vision. I still have a mountain to climb. I still have something important I want to do. If I am still running, where are the people that will run with me? And you will run faster. And you will go beyond in Jesus' name. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, not as if I don't know the path uncertainly, not as if I don't know the destination or the destiny uncertainly, not as if I don't know the crown to obtain uncertainly, not as if I don't know the thing to achieve uncertainly. It says, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. And then in verse 27, it tells us, it says, so I keep my body under. You know, you have to bring your body all to cooperate with you, that this is where we're going. Hands, come on now, join the force. Eyes, join the force. Ears, join the force. My lungs, join the force. And then you coordinate and bring together every part of your body, every part of your life, that everything will concentrate on where you are going and what destination you have. And then it says, I bring everything under into subjection. Less that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. You will not be a cast away. You will climb and you will go up in Jesus' name. And look at Second Timothy there. I'm reading from chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. If a man also strive for masteries. You see that plural? A man, one single man, striving for masteries. Is, uh, you know, we have different parts of our lives. Uh, those who are married, your husband, your father. Maybe you're a professional person, you're an engineer, and then you're still writing some research papers, you're a researcher, you have different areas. Some people, they allow one area to grow and the other area to slump, to go down. But the Apostle Paul is saying to young Timothy, if a man therefore strive for masteries in the plural, Yet you see not crowd, except a strive lawfully. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it tells us, consider what I say. What we have in life, when we get to in life, does not only depend on what we hear, but what we do with what we hear. Anybody can pass principles of success to us. It's not what we hear, it's what we do with what we hear. It is not what you hear, it is what you do with what you hear. Therefore, consider what I say. I had that, I consider that. I match that with my life. I compare that with my life. And then I evaluate my life with that that I'm hearing. What changes do I have to make? What new direction do I have to follow? What is it I must do in line with what I have heard so that what I've heard will benefit me? Consider what I say and the Lord Give thee understanding in all things. The Lord himself who brought you here, who organized this for you, to make you the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the young adult you ought to be. He brought you here for a purpose. The Lord give you understanding in how many things? In how many things, in all things, the Lord do it so that 
He will move you up from mediocrity to mastery by miracle in Jesus' name. Now, I might talk about Paul. I might talk about myself. And then I say, as I look back, in the earlier days, as I look back at Paul, as I look back at myself, and maybe as we look back to your very life, in your journey, what have we seen as the race for mediocrity to mastery? Number one, the paralysis of mediocrity. You know, mediocrity paralyzes us, paralyzes our mind. Mediocrity paralyzes our intention. Mediocrity makes us like that man at the gate in the Jerusalem um, temple. He was there only begging for arms. Mediocrity makes us paralyzed begging when we shall be rising up and moving. And in the earlier part of my life, when I was 10 years to about 15 years, that's what I discovered. But number two, the prodigals reduced to mediocres. Prodigals. Prodigals are those who run away from home, who run away from school, who run away from their families, who run away from responsibility. I can identify with that. When I run away from school, I can identify with that when I ran away from reality. I was a mediocre, but it's prodigality that brought me to that stage of a mediocre. But thank God I didn't stay there. If you have been a mediocre, thank God from this very moment, you'll not stay there in Jesus' name. Number three now is the purpose of your maker. One day, I woke up, and then I reflected, I said, what's the meaning of my name? What's the meaning of my first name, second name, and then the final name? And then I just woke up, it's like I've been sleeping. You will wake up. I said, you will wake up. If somebody sleeps perpetually, it will not fulfill the goal and the purpose of the maker. The Lord has not created us to sleep perpetually, to forget ourselves, to forget our lives, and to forget we have a goal. We have a destination, waking up to the purpose of your maker. And that's why I give altar call you know, some people don't understand. They say, uh-huh, they want to make me part of their... Nobody is making you part of anything. It will wake you up so that you come to the purpose of your maker in this very life. And this week will make a turning point in your life in Jesus' name. And the next thing, after you wake up to the purpose of your maker, is a passion for upward movement. The passion, all of a sudden, I found myself having goals, setting goals, looking up, having vision, having destiny, and making uh, everything within me to cooperate and have determination that this, that God has called me to, I will have passion and zeal, excitement about it. I'll be a man of one direction, a man of one goal. You come to that point in your life when you say, now I know the purpose of the calling of God upon my life, the purpose of my creation, and then I come with passion for an upward movement. Number five is the process of mending. Process of mending. All the years of my past life that I wasted, I needed to do remedial learning. Because if I don't know the basics, I'll not be able to build on anything. And so, as I woke up and I say, no more mediocrity. 
I'm not going to be a prodigal anymore. I've discovered the purpose of my maker for my life. And then I come with passion and with zeal and with drive to get for an onward movement. I needed to mend all the things of the past. Was I lazy in the past? Yes, I mended that. Was I distracted in the past? Yes, I had to mend that. Was I sometimes discouraged in despair? Yes, I had to mend that. Was I just going here and there without knowing what I was going to achieve? Yes, I had to mend that. I had to mend my principles. I had to mend my practices. I had to mend my personality. I had to mend everything around that would drag me down. The process of mending. And then number six is the perseverance with motivation. Motivation. Motivation, you know, motivation is the self-talk that you have. The inner talk that you have. You speaking to yourself and meditating on that, saying, I am a very important person. I'm saying it for myself. I am a very important person. I am here at this moment, this day, this week, this year, this, in this life for a purpose. I am going to be an achiever. I am going to be a mentor of other people. I am going to do what God says I can do. I am going to be what God says I must be. There is the inner motivation that is encouraging yourself in the Lord, knowing here is why I am here and I will make it. I will make it. I said, I will make it. And then you persevere. Of course, challenges will come. I read that thing, I, can, I don't understand. Read it again. I tried to solve that problem. I couldn't solve. Try it again. I tried to move up. I tried to be who I ought to be. And I couldn't do it again. The perseverance with motivation. And then number seven is the pursuit, constant pursuit. Is the pursuit, continuous pursuit. Is the pursuit, confident pursuit. Is the pursuit that you are pursuing the mastery. The pursuit of mastery. Now, as we go through all that, you might be starting at number one. Probably see some mediocrity. Don't let that encourage you. You'll come out of that tonight, and then you'll move on. You might be starting at number three, the purpose of your maker. Don't let that be. You are not late. God is not late. He can do in one week what has not been done in ten years. Amen. And then uh, perseverance. That's what we call stickability. Stickability. You stick to it like a postage stamp sticks to that envelope. If the postage stamp does not stick to that envelope, the envelope will not get to where it was destined. Stickability. You stick to it. You persevere in it with motivation, knowing that your life will amount to something. Your life will amount to something. And then you pursue that mastery. You will get there. Tonight, as I said, we're moving up from mediocrity to mastery by a miracle. Three points we're looking at quickly. Number one, the meaningless foolishness of thoughtless mediocres. Meaningless foolishness of thoughtless mediocres. Now, the mediocre is thoughtless. He does not think of what he will become. Does not think of his action. Does not think of where this will lead. That's why his foolishness is meaningless. Number one, the meaningless foolishness of thoughtless mediocres. Number two, the mighty force of thoughtful meditation. The mighty force of thoughtful meditation. When you say, my soul 
my spirit, my personality. You mention your name to yourself. Why are you where you are? Are you going to remain like this for life? A parasite? Depending on other people? Are you going to remain like this throughout life? A mediocre, not able to do anything for yourself? And you meditate. What can I become? If I will connect with the God of heaven, what will I become? If I will connect with my maker, and you meditate thoughtfully, applying everything to yourself, a mighty force will come from on high and take you from where you are to where you ought to be. I rejoice with you. That is going to start in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number three is the marvelous faith for thorough mastery. You will be a master. You will be a conqueror. You will be an achiever. And people will make you a reference point in life in Jesus' name. Let's look at number one. Number one, the meaningless foolishness of thoughtless mediocres. Look at Proverbs chapter 24, reading from verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. I will not get out of the house today. The thought of foolishness is sin. I don't think I want to go to school today. I don't like the headmaster. I don't like the principal. I don't like the teachers. I don't like uh, my classmates. Everybody is after me. The thought of foolishness is sin. I am going to uh, see if I can get something, peel, far, take this, take that, and take what, us, what others have done, uh, and then use it for myself. The thought of foolishness is sin. There's no use living. Well, what am I even doing here? I'm going to take my life. The thought of foolishness is sin. You see, the people that have not tried to make something and do something, you know, there are the people that have that kind of meaningless foolishness, all that the Lord will clear away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. And the scorner is an abomination to men. The scorner, the one that looks at opportunity and says, okay, do I have to do that to succeed? They look at learning, do I have to do that to succeed? They look at hard work and diligence, do I have to do that to succeed? They look at, you know, believing on the Lord and living a straightforward life, do I have to do that? The scorner is an abomination to men. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, If thou faint in the day of adversity, adversity comes for everyone. You're not fainting because there's dry season, because there's amatan, because there's rainy season, because, you know, the roads are rough, because of this and because of that, and because of all the news we're hearing. If you faint and you say then, I don't have any goal, I don't have any place to go, what can I do now? Look at our country, look at this. If I were born in that other country, if I were raised another country you know it's because of adversity but in this adversity you will advance you'll be an achiever a person that is always complaining your complaint about the sun will not change the sun. Why don't you just leave it like that and go ahead? They complain about the rain. Your complaint about the rain will not stop the rain. Why don't you just leave it like that? And your complaint about, you know, uh, the environment and you know, all this condition, all this condition, the complaint will not change anything. Why don't you just say this is what I have? You give me a lemon, and I don't complain about the lemon, I'll make lemonade out of that lemon. Any adversity coming your way, no complaint, and then you are not running here and there. How can this be? If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You see, as you are hearing this one now, your strength is becoming higher. I said your strength is becoming higher. 
Look at verse 21 there. Verse 21 says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. Middle not for them that are given to change. Middle not for them that are given to change. Can I explain that to you, my friend? The seed you planted yesterday, how is it? Oh, he said, I dug it up this morning. I planted it into another place. And then maybe you see him one week after. That seed you uprooted and planted that other day. Where is it now? You know, my friend, I uprooted it and planted it another way. The person that is always uprooting the seed he has planted, the life he has planted, and is, you know, giving to change. I don't like that soil. I don't like that environment. I don't like that one. And they are giving to change change they never amount to anything don't copy them and when you are somewhere stay there and be an achiever and a conqueror and the lord will make you a conqueror in jesus name look at verse 22 there in verse 22 their calamity the people that are planting and uprooting the people that are going they go one step forward and they go two steps backwards and they go three steps forward and they go seven uh, steps uh, backward they are oscillating they are here and there they are never found to be stable and steadfast in that which the lord has placed upon their shoulders what the lord wants them to do they'll have calamity and i pray there'll be no calamity in your life i said no calamity in your life stay there stay there stay there that's where your success will be you will succeed in jesus name for their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them both let's come to number two now number two is the mighty force of thoughtful meditation please if you're running through life and you're not thinking where am i coming from where am i now where am i going to life will be meaningless i've been following this path this road for such a long time I've maintained this attitude for such a long time. I have acted this way for such a long time. And yet, I have not got what I thought I will get. Meditate. Ask yourself, if I go on in this same way, this same language, this same attitude, the same habit, the same drinking, the same wasting of time. If I go on in life like this, like I've always been, I repeated that class. I was fired out of that employment because of the way I talk and the way I look and the way I position my life. If I continue like this, where will I be at the end of the day now? In the morning, the morning is the most uh, important productive time that you have. You are fresh. Your brain is fresh. Your life is fresh. Your vision is fresh. If you while away that morning, and then you squander it, like you squander money, you squander time, you squander your health, you squander your opportunities, you squander everything. Where would you be at the end of the day, at the end of the week? That's what calls for meditation. I sit down. And then I meditate. I meditate first on myself. I meditate on the promises of God. I meditate on what my action will be on those promises of God. I meditate on the possibilities of what I can do in life if I totally depend upon the Lord. Meditate. Look at Joshua chapter 1, reading there from verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do, to do, to do, 
success of any person depends on what he does. I'm courageous. Do something with that courage. I'm loving. Do something with that love. I have a goal. Do something for that goal. I'm in a good school. Do something with that school. I have a great project in life. Do something you know, for that project. You see, the talk of the mouth will not make any success. But you have courage, you do. You have passion, you do. You have vision, you do. You have the great goal, you do. It depends on what you do. You meditate, and then you get some resource, or your meditation, do. Only be thou strong. I'm very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. According to all the law. According to all the law. The law. God has made the world and you have searched the law. And you cannot complain. There's the law of gravity. If you complain, I don't like the law of gravity, I'm sorry for you. The law of gravity is there. And the law of gravity is not a respecter of anyone. If you stay on top of a building and say, I don't accept the law of gravity. I don't believe the law of gravity. I, I'm not going to restrict my life because of the law of gravity. I'm going to jump down. The law of gravity will prove to you that he is greater than who you are. Your name, your position, your knowledge, your way of thinking, uh, and your criticism of that law of gravity will not change the law of gravity. Use the law of gravity to move to where you ought to be. That's what scientists do. They know the law of gravity is there. And then they make the car, and the car is able to run, and all the things they make, even the aeroplane, they find a way of making use of that law of gravity so that they can fly you to where you ought to be. Don't fight against the law. Don't kick against the law. Use it. And the Lord will make you have progress in life in Jesus' name. You know, there are people, let me say in our country, maybe in every country in Africa, and they say, I've discovered, if I remain in this place, I cannot make it. Therefore, I will travel to they will mention a particular place of their dream. If I get there, I will succeed. Hold on before you travel. If you have a bad attitude here, it's the bad attitude that is taking you down. That's why you are not making it. If you don't change that bad attitude, you have passport, you have ticket, and then you go whithersoever you want. You carry your bad attitude with you. And bad attitude does not bear fruit anywhere. If you carry a disposition of fighting everything and pulling down everything, and you say, I don't, I'm not succeeding here. I'm traveling over there. Wait before you travel. If you carry that same attitude, you know, that new country will not change you. That new country will not change your circumstance. And you carry your attitude of fighting everything, pulling down everything, criticizing everything, prognosing into the affairs of other people around. The same experience you have here is what you are going to have there. And so, as you look at life, meditate and say, it's not where I am that is causing the problem. It's me. I am uh, my own greatest enemy. But as I become strong and determined and I say, I am going to make it, praise the Lord, 
I could even come to you there and shake your hand. Where is your hand? Give me your hand. You will succeed. Because, you know, once that attitude changes, that language changes, that disposition changes, whithersoever you find yourself, the Lord will make you prosper in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And some people say, how you about that now? This book of the Lord, and I have to be reading the law, the law every time. What that is saying, you've got a new computer. You've got a new car. You've got a new piece of machinery. There is a workbook or there is a, a book that comes with that that gives you all that that machinery, that car, that computer, all that it contains. And now you can get the best of that thing you are bought. And then if you say, yes, I have a computer already, and uh, you know, I don't want to bother myself reading any manual about anything, uh, you know what? That computer will not serve you well. Have you heard of, um, you know, garbage in, garbage out? The computer cannot produce anything by itself. It's what you feed into it. It's what you put into it. And so, if you don't read the manual, and you say, I don't have time for manual, I've got that computer, I want to use it, or the laptop, or the phone, or whatever, you will not use one tenth of the possibilities of what that electronic thing can produce. But when you take that manual and then you flip through and you read through how to do this, how to do this, how to do that, you may have the most expensive computer on earth. If you don't read that manual and know how to make use of that, it's not going to get you very far. This book of the law, this is the manual that will make us succeed. God created us and God made us and he gave us this human machine and he says, this manual is what I give you to make the very best out of life. I rejoice with you. Dust that Bible. Open that Bible. Read that Bible. That's the manual. It will not depart from your hand. It will not depart from your mouth. And then when you want to say, how do I map out my life? How do I, you know, go in life so that I will make it life, open it, every way it directs you, it will direct you so to success. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Thou shalt meditate. Thou shalt meditate. You know, the problem I discovered long ago in my past life, when I was in Standard 4, many years ago now, I thought more of my teacher, who was like an oppressor to me. When I came to secondary school, 1959, I thought more of the history geography teacher more than I thought about the subject. And then when I came uh, to even after school, sir, I thought more about the impossibilities and the hurdles people put before me, more than I thought about my life. There are many people, they think more about enemies, about hindrances. They meditate more on the people that had injured them or the people that, um, you know, are still injuring them. Let me give you an illustration. It's like somebody, he was on the field and was beaten by a snake. And because he was beaten by a snake, he was running after that snake. He want, I want to kill the snake. I want to kill the snake. Meanwhile, the poison is going up his body. It's going up in the veins, and the poison is soon get to the heart. But he says, no, I'll think about that later. I'm going to kill that snake. When you concentrate your life on killing that snake, and you're not taking care of the poison uh, that is rising in your body, that's how to die prematurely. But if life has beaten you with a sting of poison, leave them alone. Leave them in the hands of God. 
deal with that poison in your system and become if you remain alive you'll become greater than those people that have a kind of oppressed your life in jesus and so now we meditate on the word of god meditate therein day and night meditate day and night meditate tell me meditate tell me now now somebody wakes up in the morning and the very first thing he picks up he picks up his phone and then he looks at all the text and everything that came in the night and he looks at bad news there, bad news there. Then he goes to, you know, the news section and he sees everything in, uh, in the day. He's meditating on all the bad news because the phone is nearby. And then throughout the day, uh, every five minutes, he's checking up on the phone. Every five minutes, he's checking up on the text, he's checking up this and that. And many of those texts do not have something that will pump the positive mental attitude into your life. And then before they sleep at night, if they are Christian, they say they are Christians, they have read their Bible, and then they have prayed. But before they sleep, they grab that phone again, and they're looking through all the texts and WhatsApp and everything that came in in the morning, in the night. All they have to think about is what is being sent into their system. But you know, if we're going to succeed in life, we have to control that thing uh, and we don't allow that thing to control us if we control it and we say i wake up in the morning number one meditate therein in the word of god day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then uh, thou shalt make thy way prosperous thou shalt make thy way prosperous it doesn't say your country will make your way prosperous. Everything, everybody is thinking about themselves. The people up there are thinking about themselves. The people on the same level are thinking about themselves. The people down below you, they are thinking of themselves. If anybody is going to think about your progress, about your prospects, if anybody is going to think about your climbing up, it's yourself. It's yourself. Dedicate quality time to meditating and thinking you know, about yourself. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then uh, thou shalt have good success. Number three now. Point number three is the marvelous faith for thorough mastery. Marvelous faith for thorough mastery. You will master every difficulty in your life. I will master every difficulty in my life. I will master every challenge in my life. The past is gone. I said the past is gone. Say that the past is gone. The present is going to be transformed. The future will be triumphant. I will not remain as I have always been. Confidently. I will not remain as I have always been. Now I bring you to the platform of faith. And that faith will turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. Begin to think about what you want your life to be, where you want to get to in life, what your vision for life is, personal happiness, personal joy, personal fulfillment, personal upliftment, everything about life. Don't say, is that possible? It's possible. Don't say, is that achievable? It is achievable. Don't say, is that problem solvable? It is solvable. Don't say, is this circumstance, is this conquerable? It's conquerable. You are going to be what God created you to be. It's just a matter of staying now 
I'm becoming the person that is thoughtful, the person that is meditative, and the person that says this will be done. It will be done. With faith, all things are possible. The people who are greeting you up, and when they hear your name, they say, oh, forget about that. That cannot be. You will be. You will rise. All those things they said cannot be, cannot be. Today is the turning point in your life. How will that happen? The marvelous faith of thorough mastery. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, unto whom? Jesus said unto him, I said unto whom? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Maybe you are thinking, my sins are too many. They cannot be forgiven. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You are forgiven tonight in Jesus' name. The chain of my bad habit is so strong, tying me down. I cannot break loose tonight. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. It will set you free. I said it will set you free. Failure is ingrained in my system. I think about myself. I think about failure. I think about defeat. Can I ever get out of that failure and then succeed in life if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. As you believe tonight, failure will be a thing of the past. You'll take care of many families. You'll take care of your enemies. And the people that thought he was a mediocre, he will always forever be a mediocre, you will rise up. The power of God will rise up within you. The giant in you that has been tied down for a long time, that giant tonight will rise up in you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Impossibilities will be possible in your life. Jesus says unto you, if you can only believe all things are possible to you as you believe. Let's bow and I is closed. Destinies are going to change here tonight. Lives are going to change here tonight. If the world has buried you, there's going to be a resurrection for your life tonight in Jesus' name. Mediocre, that's what they called you. You are coming to the top of the mountain. Let's bow and eyes closed. You want the Lord to erase the past. You want the Lord to forgive the past. You want the Lord to change the past. You want a new beginning, a new start. And you want a new strength that will carry you through life. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. A special prayer, I'm praying for you tonight. You're saying, oh Lord, I understand. I've been a mediocre. I've been a prodigal. I've been a run away. I've been a person. I was just wumbling through life. And my life has not amounted to much. But now, I'm going to start with you. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Where are you? And you raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, uh, you please stand up. A special prayer coming for you tonight. Where are you? Where are you? God bless you there. God bless you. Today is that day. A day of change. A day of transformation. And a day of conversion. All the sins of the past, the Lord will forgive. And everything that had been a problem before you, the Lord will take everything away tonight. 
trace up your hand. You know where you have been. You know what you have done. You know the failure you have been. You know the defeat that has been in your life. But now the Lord is saying he wants to write a new record concerning you. He wants to write your name in the, among the people who are born again. Among the people who are transformed. Among the people who are totally, completely changed. Who are you? Here is your chance. Here is your chance. Here is your chance that if you have been in that dark region, that dark dungeon, you are coming out, you are coming out, and light will blare before you.